Good afternoon. Now relax, right where you are in your seat, relax, and let the law of God be made manifest in your experience. Let this presence of God flow into immediate expression. Let us not talk about God. Let us not talk about truth. Let God reveal itself. Let God express itself. Let us live in the uh, spiritual way. Let us live the spiritual truth. Or let this truth live us. Let God live our lives. Let there be no more I and the Father, let the Father be my life. God is infinite consciousness, awareness, soul. God is the consciousness of our being, therefore Infinity is the measure of our being. Infinity is the measure of our being. Therefore, nothing can be added to us. No good can come to us. No evil can come nigh our dwelling place. Since God, infinite good, infinite consciousness, is our individual consciousness, our individual awareness, then we embrace within our own being the infinity of good, the allness of God. Therefore it is said, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. All that I have, all that I am, all that deity is, already is thine, is established within you. Therefore, good cannot come to you, good cannot flow to you. Good expresses itself within you and flows out. upon all within range of you. Your consciousness is the abiding place of my word. Let my word abide in you and you abide in my word. Your consciousness is the abiding place of my word, and my word does not return unto me void. My word, the word of God, in the midst of you, is mighty. We do not seek help. 
We do not seek aid. We do not seek health. We do not seek supply. Because the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is established within you. You are that place in consciousness through which the infinite nature of God is revealing itself. It is only necessary to be still, to refrain from taking thought, from taking anxious thought, fearful thought, doubtful thought. Be still. Be still and know that in quietness and in confidence I shall find my peace permanence, security, not in the realm of bomb shelters, not in the realm of bank accounts, in uh, thy kingdom, in uh, thy peace, in thy quietness and confidence we find rest, protection, care, cooperation. In quietness and in confidence. In the assurance that before Abraham was I am with you and I will be with you even unto the end of the world therefore fear not fear not drop your burdens at my feet drop your burdens in the realization of all good embodied and embraced within your being. There is no peace, there is no rest for those who still are seeking. There is no peace, there is no rest for those who are seeking outside of their own being. The kingdom of God is within you. No need to seek. No need to search. Accept. Be at peace. I will never leave thee. Nor forsake thee. And if you make your bed in hell, I will be with thee. And if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with thee. Only walk in quietness, in confidence, in assurance. There is nothing to be achieved tomorrow. There is no penalty for yesterday. We do not live on yesterday's manna, nor can we live on tomorrow's manna. We cannot live yesterday. We cannot live tomorrow. Now are we the sons of God. Now are we heirs of God joint heir with Christ and all the heavenly riches. Now, 
in this moment of rest, of relaxation in me, in confidence in me, the me of you, which is God. We do not look to man whose breath is in his nostril. We do not look to princes. We do not put our faith in princes, no matter how high or how powerful. Nor do we fear man whose breath is in his nostril. For all power is given unto me, the word of God, in you. All power is established within you. There is no power external to you. Never fear what man can do to you. Never fear what circumstances can do to you. Never fear what any effect can do to you. Never fear creation. Trust the Creator. Shall the creation mean more to you than the Creator? Shall you love creation more than the Creator? Shall you ever fear that that which God has created can harm or injure? And can you believe that there is another creation? A creation apart from God? Oh no. Oh no, I shall not fear what mortal man can do. Or invent. Or create. Or say. Or think. Is the thought of man a power, not even when it is good? The most loving thought a parent can give their child is not a healing thought, else all children would be continuously and permanently healed. No loving thought from child to parent is healing, or else no parent would ever be sick or die. Your thoughts are not my thoughts, saith the Lord. It is only in my thought that there is power. So do not look to the thought of man for your blessing, and certainly never fear the thought of man as a curse. May I tell you a secret? The world doesn't like to accept this secret. The evil that men do rise no higher than themselves. All evil is self-destructive. It never destroys those it aims at. Ah, but you say, the Jews died in the ovens in Germany. No, they didn't. Never believe that for a moment. The Jews never suffered from Hitler. Only Hitler suffered from Hitler. The Jews lost nothing but their physical sense of life. And that they regained in the very next moment. No man ever dies, whether by disease, whether by bullet, by gas, by bomb. No man ever dies. Therefore, never fear the loss of physical life. Never fear the thoughts or deeds of others. 
any evil that exists in human thought destroys only those who think them. Can we prove this? Yes. In this moment we can prove it. Abide in the truth of God's kingdom established on earth. You abide in the truth that God is the only power and then you will witness that all blessings emanate to you, through you, from this truth entertained in your consciousness. But if you for a moment believe that you can harm another or that another can harm you, then you will suffer not from another but from your belief that another has power. And so again, the harm will come not from another, but from you. That is why scripture says, I create good and I create evil. It isn't God that creates evil. It is that we set up evil within ourselves by deviation from truth. What is truth? God is one power, the power of good. Anything that you accept in thought, even in belief, of a power apart from God will harm you. You must come out and be separate. You must come out from duality. You must come out from the belief that there is a power apart from your own consciousness. You must come out and be separate from the belief that good can come to you or that evil can come now your dwelling place. Good is established within you and evil is only a power to those who give it power. Of itself, it is no more power than a shadow on the wall. Heretofore, it has been deemed a higher good to give up the search or prayer for things and to pray only for peace, safety, security, harmony, wholeness, perfection. But I say to you now, where will you seek these? To whom will you pray for these? Since they constitute your being. You were made up of these in the beginning before ever time began. God formed us of his own being of his own nature, character, and qualities. God constitutes our being. There is no search. There is no seeking. There is no desiring even of good. There is a rest for the people of Israel, for the people of spiritual consciousness. There is a rest and a returning to the Father's house, to the realization of divine presence, of divine power, of divine love as all. Let no man glory in his understanding 
Let no man glory in his spiritual powers. All power is in God. All power is of God. All power is God. We are the instruments of that power and of that presence. It is the shepherd, it is the fortress, it is the high tower, and we abide in this word. Abide in the word that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Abide in the truth that I am closer than breathing and nearer than hands and feet. Abide in the truth that you have no power over evil, but that your names are written in heaven, that you are the Christed Son of God, the image and likeness of his divine being, the manifestation of his glory, I am come that you might have life and that you might have this life more abundantly. Let our prayer, let our prayer be a resting from words, a resting from thoughts, a resting from desire. Let us relax into our own inner being and live this infinite way. Let this infinite way live in us. Take no anxious thought. And if I go away, I will send you a comforter even the spirit of truth, and it will never leave you. If every personal sense of good departs from you, and every avenue of good, and every channel of good, even so, the spirit of truth, the comforter, will never leave you. It is an activity within your own consciousness the comforter is an activity of God within your own consciousness. It is as much an entity or identity as your integrity. As you claim integrity, loyalty, fidelity, so claim the comforter as a part of your very being as much of an activity of your consciousness as your honesty, as your fidelity. As you claim some measure of wisdom, so claim some measure of the comforter. The comforter is within you. The comforter is a peace be still to every storm without and every stir within. Instead of thinking, praying, speaking, Open the door of consciousness and let the comforter speak. Let the comforter assure. Let the comforter be your supply, your health, 
the harmony of your home, of your inner life. Home is not external to you. Home is an area of your own consciousness. Home really is your idea of heaven. The kingdom of God is within you. If you behold any evil thought or deed in another, even though it be aimed at you, do not fear it. Do not fear the individual. And above all, do not resent or hate. To resent it makes it a part of your experience. And so there again you make yourself responsible for the evils that come nigh your dwelling place. Understand that only the evil in the mind of an individual can touch the individual who is entertaining it. Never fear it. Never hate it. Never resent it. But have compassion by knowing that even the individual will awaken out of the dream of two powers. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that persecute you, despitefully use you. Pray that they awaken, but never fear and never resent. Never fear and never resent. As no good can come to you, you are already established in good. No harm can come to you because God is the measure of your good. God is the measure of your being. God is the eternality of your life. God is the infinity of your consciousness. God is the purity of your soul. These things can never be hurt by man whose breath is in his nostril. Yes, your good may be evilly spoken of. It may even be taken as weakness. Do not let that concern you. You have nothing to prove. And you have nobody to prove anything to. Have no responsibility for proving this. The government is upon his shoulder. Take no personal pride in proving this. Feel no responsibility to prove this. Let the world entertain its own concepts of God, of man, of religion, of prayer. Those concepts will not disturb you. God is infinite consciousness. Therefore, God is individual consciousness. Therefore, God is your consciousness and mine. Then outside of God, 
which means outside of your consciousness and mine, nothing can exist. Now, what have you in your house? God is your consciousness. Now what are you entertaining in your house? Concepts of good, concepts of evil. Remember, nothing exists outside of your consciousness. And if there is no evil in your consciousness, there is no evil operating in your world. How do we know whether or not evil is operating in our consciousness? By what we see within us. Do we see a presence apart from God? Do we see a power apart from God? Then evil exists in our thought. Do we see something to hate, fear, resent? Then we have a self-created image We are fearing the image we have created within us. Because in truth, God fills our consciousness. God is the very fabric, substance, and law of our consciousness. And to behold anything but God, anything but good, to behold anything or anyone to hate, resent, or fear, is to behold a mirage, that which has no existence, that which has no reality, that which has no power. So even should we see the water on the desert, let us understand that it can exist only as a mirage without substance or wetness. Even though we see and hear evil men let us know that we are beholding but a mirage, a figment of thought, without any activity, without any power, without any presence, without any reality. Understanding God to be our consciousness, let us also understand that we embody all that God has made. We embody the universe. We look out from our world and we behold the stars. We look out from the stars and we behold the world. We look out from ourselves and behold each other. We look out from each other and behold ourselves. And always it is God beholding the image and likeness of God and understanding that this is the Garden of Eden. This is heaven. This is divine consciousness in which is nothing that defileth or maketh a lie. What we seem to see or be aware of as evil is but a suggestion or temptation to accept the Creator apart from God. This we must handle within ourselves. until we do come to that place of rest in which we have the Word of God abiding in us and we find ourselves abiding in this consciousness of truth.
heaven is not to be attained. Heaven and earth is one. Heaven is to be realized. God is not to be attained. God is to be realized. Health, peace, safety, security, these are not to be attained. These are to be realized as here and now where I am. The place where on thou standest is holy ground for I and the Father are one. To live the spiritual life means to live in an atmosphere of thank you, Father, it is done. Or be not afraid, it is I. In the face of any storm, in the face of any disaster, in the face of any sin, in the face of any disease or lack, Realize, be not afraid, it is I. This is the greatest healing truth ever revealed to human consciousness. Be not afraid, it is I. To the disciples, it was a storm a storm that meant probably death and disaster. But he said, be not afraid, it is I. To us the circumstance may appear terrible, the condition may appear to be one of death, disease, war. To the Christ, be not afraid, it is I. Be not afraid, it is I. We live the spiritual life only in proportion as we have attained some measure of realization. Be not afraid, it is I. That was the same ability that stood before Pilate and said, Thou couldst have no power over me unless it came from the Father in heaven. That was the same power that said to the brethren, You did not sell me into slavery. You did not do this thing to me. God sent me before you into Egypt. The brethren thought that they had done evil unto Joseph, but God knew that Joseph had to be in Egypt, and Joseph wasn't alert enough to go of his own accord. God has strange ways to bring us to himself. God has strange ways to awaken us to spirit as a way of life. And sometimes that which we call evil, certainly that which the world calls evil, is often the very way of bringing us unto Christ. 
unto our spiritual life. Never be concerned for the discords of the day and think that they represent lack of demonstration. It was not lack of demonstration that drove Moses 40 years through the desert through lack, limitation, enemies. It was God leading the Hebrews to a higher sense of good. It wasn't lack of understanding or lack of demonstration that drove Elijah out into the wilderness to be so unhungered that it, the ravens had to bring him food. That wasn't lack of demonstration. That was God taking this means of revealing to Elijah 7,000 of those who have not bowed their knees to Baal and of proving to Elijah that even in the midst of the wilderness, there am I with you and uh, able always to set a table in the wilderness before thine enemies. It wasn't lack of demonstration that took Jesus to be tempted of the devil. It wasn't lack of understanding that brought him to the wilderness and hungered. It was God's way of revealing that we do not demonstrate by making bread but by learning every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It wasn't lack of demonstration or lack of understanding that placed the master on a crucifix. Nor was it lack of understanding that placed Peter and Silas in a prison. Oh, no, those were God's opportunities of rising above the physical limitation of the senses to the realization of God as able even to lead forth out of a tomb and out of a prison. It wasn't lack of demonstration or lack of understanding that placed the asp on the hand of Paul when he brushed it off? No. It was his opportunity to prove the nothingness of what the world called an evil power, a deathly power. It wasn't lack of understanding or lack of demonstration that sent St. John to the Isle of Patmos, a prisoner for life. It was a God-given opportunity to have a revelation from Jesus Christ and to write it down as the book of Revelation. Never look upon the discords and inharmonies of your everyday living as if it represented a lack of understanding or a lack of demonstration or else you will make it so to you. But look upon these discords and inharmonies as opportunities. When they no longer serve your purpose, they will no longer be there. This too will enable you to understand that there is only one power. And so the discords and inharmonies do not mean that there is a second power in your life, oh no. No, never honor them by giving them an evil cause. Stand in God as the one power. That is living the spiritual way. God is the one power. Then when we are beset with temptations, we will recognize them as temptations, as false appearances, as a state of ignorance. 
but never will we accept them as an evil power. In this moment that we are here, let us have courage for a few moments to look out at every person and every circumstance that we have deemed harmful or destructive to us. Let us, in this moment, where two of us are gathered together, two or more of us are gathered together in this name, united in the word, and now in this union, <coughs> let us dare to face in the silence the person or persons, the situations or conditions that we have deemed harmful or destructive. And in seeing them, be sure that you know <coughs> that you are looking at the creation of your own mind. They have no external existence. They have no power. They exist only as mirage, an image in thought. Now, face the situation bravely, face the condition, face the person, and see if it isn't an image of your own thought that you are facing. And then just know, <coughs> God never empowered it. It is without influence, jurisdiction, it has no law to support it. And if there is anyone in all this world, anyone, in your life, or mine, or his, or hers, who believes they have the power to injure. Do you not see that they suffer only from that belief, but can never inflict that belief upon you? If I believe with all the sincerity of my heart that two times two are five, I cannot make you suffer from my belief. If I believe with all the intensity of my being that you are dead, that will not make you be dead or believe you are dead. Any belief I entertain about me or about you reacts only upon me. The belief acts and reacts only upon the believer. If I see you as you are, I am blessed, and in my true seeing, you are blessed. If you see me as I am, you will be satisfied with that likeness. And you will be blessed, and I will be blessed, because it isn't your thought, it is truth. Every time you recognize God, 
as the soul of an individual, you bless yourself and you bless them. Every time you think a mortal, material, limiting thought about, about another, you do no harm to them whatsoever. The belief reacts upon you. There is a malpractice, a self-malpractice. We suffer from the lies we accept about ourselves or about another. And no one suffers for our beliefs but ourselves. That is why you are a law unto yourself. You are a law because you can know the truth about yourself and about the others thereby be a law of harmony unto your being. Or, you can accept the law of the world, and you can behold good and evil, and therefore, thereby bring the curse of Adam. And the curse of Adam is an exclusion from the Garden of Eden. But who excludes Adam from the Garden of Eden? Is there any power apart from his own being or no? I know I create good and I create evil. Either by the acceptance of truth or mortal belief. There is a principle being given to us today. And this principle is that we are at rest in the kingdom of God in Eden where there are no two powers but one and this one good. And that no good can come to us and no evil. For God is that which constitutes our being. God is the very substance and fabric of our being. And on the other hand, the principle tells us, fear not what mortal man can do or think, since mortal thought is self-destructive. Fear not the thoughts or deeds of man whose breath is in his nostril. For ye are the temple of God, and God is in his holy temple now. Ye are the temple of the living God. Your body is the temple of the living God. Your life, your soul, your mind is the abiding place of truth. And if you abide in this truth and let this truth abide in you, no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling place. You have not wholly released.
and the reason is in the word forgiveness. We have not wholly forgiven ourselves for our past beliefs or we have not wholly forgiven those who have trespassed against us. Now each one today must find a release within themselves through forgiveness. It may be that we still entertain self-condemnation for the faults of the past, false sins of omission or commission. But God is not holding anything against us. In the entire kingdom of God, there is no punishment. If we are holding ourselves in bondage to yesterday, it is we who are holding ourselves. It is not God or the Christ holding us. Therefore, find forgiveness for yourself within your own being in the realization that you are not being held in condemnation. Neither do I condemn thee. Of course, go and sin no more. Now that you have learned uh, that God is the infinite nature of your being, uh, what need is there to envy, to be jealous, to be resentful, to be hateful, to be ambitious. Since now we know God to be our inner satisfaction, how can we long for anything external to our own being? And in this realization, we become beholders. And there is the true relationship that we have to God. Be a beholder. Watch the blessings of God as they unfold in your experience. Do not try to bring them there. Do not pray for them. Do not mentally strive for them. Be a beholder and watch them unfold from within. Watch them as they unfold in the outer picture. Be a beholder. And yet, perform every activity given you to do. Our Father has imparted to us himself. This is my understanding of eating the body drinking the blood. This is my understanding of partaking of the very body of God, of the very nature of God, of the very embodiment of God. This is my understanding of partaking of Him. I have meat the world knows not. I can give you life, waters, that spring into life eternal. The invisible waters, the invisible wine, the invisible meat. This is what I understand to partake of the living God, of the living Word, and then be a beholder as the Word becomes flesh and dwells among us. Thank you.